My name is uh, Cas van Kota and I'm uh, from the Netherlands, Utrecht. So I'm a red teamer at a big bank in the Netherlands. So basically my job is to uh, emulate the real threats, uh, think and act like a bad guy uh, to make sure that uh, our internal defenses are uh, up to par. So my talk is about uh, building your own tools. So uh, we see as red teamers that uh, our job is kind of shifting from just being the bad guy to also developing and maintaining uh, custom tools to bypass defenses. So my talk is basically uh, talk, uh, yeah, covering this shift in, uh, uh, in our job and uh, uh, telling people on what options they have in terms of procuring your own tools. So for example, you have a decision between uh, developing a tool from scratch, so just building it yourself. Uh, you can take open source tools and modify them, or you can just buy them from uh, from other parties. And uh, yeah, we see that this is becoming more and more a requirement to uh, to stay ahead of the uh, defensive teams. Yeah, so uh, as an example, uh, in my talk I cover uh, uh, tools that I wrote, uh, which are called uh, Nimpact and uh, Nimplant. Uh, so I think uh, Nimplant is a good example because it's what we call a command and control framework. Uh, so basically it's what we use to, to maintain remote access to a compromised machine after we compromise it. So uh, if we get in via phishing, for example, uh, we install some malware that makes sure that we uh, remain in control of that system, either, even if they reboot it, uh, uh, and yeah, even if, uh, uh, or even while trying to stay ahead of defenses. And uh, that's becoming increasingly hard because, of course, defenders are actively looking for these types of tools. And uh, as a red team, we don't want our uh, engagements to be done in uh, a couple of hours. So uh, we need to stay under the radar with this type yeah. of tool. A problem with the first talk uh, about detect... Yeah, a little bit. So uh, Dominic uh, talked a bit about uh, detecting uh, beacons or implants uh, uh, in memory. Uh, I'm sure some of his techniques would also catch my tools. Uh, so I'm, I'm kind of depending on the fact that defenders, uh, they have limited time, just as we attackers have limited time. Uh, so our, uh, our tools as attackers, they don't need to be undetected all the time, but they need to be they, they need to look a little bit like legit, legitimate tools at least so that we avoid the initial alerts and uh, maybe defenders find our tools, but uh, hopefully by then uh, we'll also uh, already achieve our objectives. Yeah, so I'm, I'm really a big fan of uh, collaboration uh, between red and blue and definitely purple teaming is, uh, is a great uh, field in our uh, work that, uh, that we should focus uh, more on. Uh, in the end, uh, I'm a red teamer, so I'm, I'm on one side of the spectrum, but uh, we shouldn't forget as red teamers we are doing this because we want to improve uh, defenses. So we are helping train the blue team, uh, we are helping, tailor, uh, helping them to tailor their tools to detect us in in the end, uh, just so that uh, if the next time a real attacker comes in, they will detect them. Uh, so this co collaboration between red and blue, where uh, blue learns from red, but also definitely red learns from blue, uh, um, and looking at these types of talks that we uh, that we see today, uh, it's yeah, it's a great way to learn, and I think that's the only way to advance security as a, uh, a field altogether. It's great. So it's my my first time at uh, at Zivcon. Uh, so I uh, I flew into uh, Poland uh, yesterday, uh, and so far the atmosphere is great. I'm I'm meeting a lot of people that I uh, uh, before only knew from Twitter. So uh, having lots of chats with uh, with people that were really defining the industry. Uh, yeah. So it's it's a great uh, great atmosphere uh, so far, and also looking forward to the party uh, this evening, of course. <laughs>